On today's episode, we're going to do a dramatic black and white image. So stay tuned and let's get started. We're going for a dramatic black and white or monochrome image. So this sky looks a little bit boring. So let's uh, take advantage of Luminar 4 sky replacement filter. So let's come over to the creative tab and come up to sky replacement and let's pick a sky uh, sky selection I'm thinking maybe dramatic 3 might be good and that looks pretty good now I just want to zoom in and see if there's any issues there's a little bit of issue uh, right around in here and over here is a little bit of an issue so let's see if we can fix that up so I think if we take the horizon position and start to move it up a little bit maybe somewhere right around in there and let's take the horizon blending and blend that maybe somewhere right around there now let's take a look at this side over here now we have a little issue here i think we can fix this by using this closed gap so let's pull this up right around there let's take a let's uh click this toggle here so we can see the before and the after yeah that looks believable right there i think we're good to go let's click on the canvas to zoom back out and take a look at it yeah, I think we're good. We're ready to move on to the next step. All right, so now let's come up to the uh, Essentials tab and let's go to one of my favorites, AI Enhance, and let's bump up AI Accent because we want to bring a lot of drama out here. Now, I'm going to bring up more drama than I would normally do in a color image but because I really want this thing to pop and really stand out as a nice black and white. Okay. So let's maybe start out right around there. Let's work with our AI Sky Enhancer a little bit too. Yeah, and that darkens the top up a little bit. Yeah, and I want that nice broody sky in there. Okay, so, so far so good. Uh, the next step, let's go ahead and add some AI structure. Now here I'm going to probably go a little overboard as well. Because in black and white images, you really, you can use a lot of texture and a lot of... Uh, structure and things like that and a lot of contrast so let's go ahead and bring this up we can always go back and readjust later if we need to but and that looks that's probably a not not a bad point uh, if we need to come back and change things we will so now let's go to the uh, black and white conversion and let's click on convert to black and white and yeah Already, you see, see, it looks nice with that extra structure in there. Now, let's play with our uh, luminance tones for the different colors, red, yellow, green, and so on. So, let's start with reds. I want to make these buildings. These buildings were red. So, if we uh, move this slider, red slider to the left, we'll darken them. Or if we move it to the right, we'll lighten them. I think, no, we could lighten them. But I would prefer, I think, darkening them. That'll add some extra contrast. So, I'm going to pull this more to the left right around right around there looks pretty good now let's play with the yellows let's go one way with the yellows let's go the other way okay and I'm looking at these tones around here so do we want to lighten them up or darken them down I think I want to darken them down a bit yeah something yeah a good bit actually maybe right around there now let's play with greens maybe what I'll do is pull the greens up a little bit just trying to pop some contrast out of this image. Now we have cyan. Let's see what cyan will do for us. We can lighten up our cyans or darken them down. I'm going to try something here. I'm going to lighten up the cyan a little bit and then take my blue and darken my blue down. Yeah, I think I'll do that. So I'm going to take my blue almost the whole way down. And you got to really watch so, so you don't get any uh, image compression in here. It looks like ugly artifacts. And I don't see any in here. so. But be weary of that, so. Okay, so I'm going to bring that blue down a good bit here. Now let's play with the cyan again. Do we want to lighten it up? Yeah, because it's these areas in the water here, it looks pretty nice on. I don't want to go too crazy with it, but maybe somewhere right around in here. All right, so that's looking pretty good so far. Let's click the uh, eyeball right here. See our before, so we've come from here and we've gone to here and already it's looking really dramatic 
We're not done yet, but let's keep going. For the next step, I think I'm gonna make a new layer. So I'm gonna come up here to the layers icon and click the plus and add a new adjustment layer. Cause I wanna start working with contrast now and light. So, uh, and I also, the reason I'm doing this is because this adjustment amount slider, if I go overboard with it, I can ease it off with this. And that's really the reason why I'm adding this new layer here, okay? So let's come to the essentials tab. We're gonna come up to light. And I love Smart Contrast because it really does a really good job. It won't block up those shadows too bad when you really drag it up. So I want to, you know, black and white images love contrast. So I'm going to really jack up this uh, Smart Contrast here. But you see the drama that that punches in there. Let's go to this layer uh, checkbox right here. And here's the before and there's the after. See with that contrast in there? And you notice my histogram, I'm not blowing any of the highlights out, so that's pretty cool. So there's the before, the smart contrast, and after, and that is really nice. Now, I may be too strong here, but again, we can come back and readjust. And let's see, let's play with our highlights a little bit. I might just ease off in the highlights a little bit, just to tame them down, just a little bit. I don't want to go too crazy there. All right. And the smart contrast is really good. It's not really going to hurt the highlights. And now let's maybe open up the shadows a little bit because we've added all that extra contrast. So I don't want to lose any of my detail in my shadows. So I want to be careful here. And now let's go into advanced settings and let's take our black point right here. And if I move it to the left, I'll make my blacks darker. So let me move this to the left a little bit here. Because I want those blacks really, really, really dark, really contrasting. Because, again, I'm going for a very dramatic black and white image here today. Something like that. And I think my whites are good. I'm not going to touch them. And let's play with our shadows again. Do I want to open those up a little more after I added that? Yeah, maybe just a little bit. Something like that. Let's come up to this layer and let's toggle this on and off. So here's before and after. So look at that drama in there. And again, if I went too far, watch, I can just take this adjustments amount and start to ease it off, you know, and I can just add just the right amount in there that we think that we need. So I'm going to bring this up. Maybe I want a good bit of that in there. And I'm thinking maybe right there looks pretty good. Now let's go ahead and click the uh, eyeball right here. This will show us the, the uh, original image when I click the eyeball. So here's where we've come from. We've come from this image to this image. But look at the drama in there. It's really, really nice. It's always good to study your image, and I always tell you this in my tutorials. But I'm looking here after I made this adjustment right here. You can see some of that um, artifacting that I was talking about, some of that uh, compression. Watch when I shut this uh, adjustment layer one off. Yeah, you can tell, I can still see it there. I missed it before. So I think I pulled my blue down a little bit too much when I was doing the black and white conversion. So let's go back to that layer right there. That's the original layer. And let's come under the Essentials tab and the black and white. Now watch up here. I'm going to take this blue and look for that compression there. I'm going to back it off just till it goes away. And I'm thinking right around let's yeah let's take it back to zero right there all right that's going to fix it so now we're going to come back up to the layers and turn the adjustment layer back on yeah and that took care of that problem so you got to be careful with that let's click this again before and after yeah and i'm really liking that i might just go ahead and take this the whole way up now yeah so here's the before there's the before and here's the after. So the before and the after. The finishing touch is going to be a vignette. I want to have an oval shaped vignette right around here. Now the vignette tool is not going to give that to me because I'm going to encompass this mountain and these buildings up around here and the rest to go dark on the edges. Okay. So to do that I'm going to go and add a new adjustment layer. Come to the essentials tab. And we're going to go to our Curves tool right here. I'm going to pull down on the Curves tool just to darken up the entire image here. Maybe somewhere around there. Now we can readjust afterwards. So right there. And then we're going to go and get 
uh, a mask here. Edit mask, we're going to get a radial mask. Now it says click and drag to draw a circle. So I'm just going to click and drag and start to draw a circle. Now you can come to these little dots here and you can pull on these guys because I want more of an oval shape, something like that. Maybe make it a little bit wider. This area will get uh, no adjustment in here and it'll graduate out from here out. And then from here it'll be totally dark or have the full adjustment on it. Now I'm going to adjust it, the, the uh, angle of it here. And that's probably pretty good. I might just widen it out a little bit more this way too a little bit and just come right around in here. Now when I drag my uh, mouse off to the right that um, the overlay tool goes away. So now we can come back up to layers and click on the checkbox. So here's the before and here's the after. So that's really doing what I want. Now if I went overboard here I could either go to that curve and readjust it or I could just take this adjustments amount and just slide it back to the left and just ease off on that a little bit. I don't want to go overboard here, but I do want to draw emphasis to these buildings in that mountain right there. So let's click this checkbox. Here's the before and here's the after. So there's the before and the after. And I think that really does it. Now let's come up here and click the eye right here, this eyeball right here and see the original image. So here's our original image. So we went from there to there. So it's a dramatic black and white. There you have it, a dramatic black and white using Luminar 4. Hey, if you enjoyed this one today, please give it a like and share it with your friends. If you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe and click that bell notification icon. And then every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll be notified about it. Hey, also, please leave comments and questions in the comment section below, and I'll get back to you as soon as I possibly can. Well, I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today on The Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly, and I'll see you all right here next time. But until then, happy editing.